What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoy the Scale News Update regularly, hit the like button now. Otherwise, let's get ready for this week's topics. First for this week, Spectrum released the new flagship radio, the IXSR. Again, flagship radio for the surface area. This is similar to the DX6R that they had a number of years back, being that it is a six channel Android powered radio. It does address a number of the things that the DX6R had against it with that style and you know the polishing that has come along with it. The UI is very similar to the previous DX6R as I'm told, but a lot of the rest of it is, is new and updated. But with all of that new and updated, it does come with a new updated price of $699. So it's not an inexpensive radio. It does come with a five channel receiver, not a six channel, even though it is a six channel radio. It would be nice if it came with the full capability out of the box, but you know, you get what you get. It does have hall effect sensors for the steering and the throttle. There was a number of little things with the, you know, advertising that people pointed out thinking that, you know, maybe they thought that they were the first to do that. I don't know if they really said first or they really pushed that, but either way, it does have them at least. It feels nice itself. I did a full review or first look video, I guess I would call it, uh, as I had a little bit of time with it, but I didn't have the full manual to really dive in and fully understand. There's been a number of things that I've figured out now as time has gone and I've got more time to play with it. The startup on this radio is like a minute long by the time you power it on and before it's actually fully ready to go, which is not all that fun but it does have a sleep mode like your cell phone. So you turn it on once and then you're supposed to just leave it on, but you put it in sleep mode and it doesn't really use much, if any battery while it's in sleep mode. So during a, you know, race day or a trail day or whatever, you would turn it on and then you would just put it in sleep when you're not using it. That's the intention. It's a different mindset than what we're typically used to in the ground radio area. This is something that I think is more common in the flight or the, you know, airplane drone world with this type of radio. At least they've got a couple of radios that use a very similar setup. So it's just a little bit of retraining if you decided that you wanted to go with this. But like I said, I did a full video on it. If you'd like a little bit more of an in-depth look, you can go check that out. These are available now for pre-order. If you're interested in hearing more about it, I'll link the video that I did up in the corner here. And then I'll also put a link below where you can go read all of the details on it on Horizon site. Next, new from J Concepts, two new tires in the 2.2 inch wheel, 5.25 inch tall size. This is the ruptures and the holds. The ruptures are a super popular tire in the 4.75 area. They've also got them for the smaller sizes as well. And I believe that they have a 2.2 size that's maybe larger than this as well. But regardless of that, this is gonna be a tire that's gonna be a good option for people that are just looking for all out performance, not necessarily super worried about the scale style restraints or the wheel size. Cheater trucks that are just looking for the full out edge, you know, where they can take it, or I guess class three, if you're specifically looking at the holds. The ruptures, I don't think will pass class three rules if you're looking at Sorca type rules, but not the goal for these tires anyway. The ruptures are just known to do super well, and I'm sure that this size is going to be another popular one. In the photos, they had them on an H10 optic, so you put that truck itself with the longer wheelbase on a little bit larger tire, and it's gonna do really well. So definitely gonna be a tire that could be hard to get. J Concepts supply can be a little bit dodgy. You gotta like catch it in the waves that they come in. So if you're interested in these and you see them in stock, I'd swoop them up because you're not guaranteed to be able to find them. Speaking of J Concepts, I also noticed that their Ford Aerostar body has hit distributors now. So if you thought about using that body for something other than just a monster truck, available now at A-Main, which also means it's available at a ton of your local dealerships as well. If you've been thinking about shopping for a Ford Aerostar, now's the time. <laughs> then in one of the quietest releases from Traxxas in a really long time, they released a TRX-4M portal set and a two-speed set for the TRX-4M. Uh, the TRX-4M, the 118th scale. Anyway, the portal set that they released for this, good looking set of portals, adds a significant amount of ground clearance, uh, is much a, a surprising 
amount of ground clearance actually for an 18th scale. So depending on how you're building your truck and where you're trying to put the weight or what the performance goals for it is, this could be something that makes a huge difference for when you're driving around. The price on the portals is $129, which is pretty expensive when the whole truck from Traxxas normally is like 150 bucks, which I mean, just shows how competitive they got the pricing on that full car. I mean, it, when it came out, seeing how it was built, seeing what was included with the bodies that were on it, it was impressive to see the price and to see this axle set now come out and it be real close to that total cost of a new truck. That was surprising. I think, uh, you know, maybe some people thought, well, wow, these axles are just way too expensive, which, you know, some people will have that opinion and they are a complete axle set. But again, it does just put into perspective the price that they got that full RTR down to. Also the two speed for this, it's a huge difference in the gearing of the two speed. It's like a 3.4, 3.5, you know, times difference from the low gear to the high gear. And I keep doing this because it's a manually shifted two speed. So you're just going to reach in there and click the lever into high or low. You know, I, I think that that's a, a decent solution for, to keep the price down. It is only 49 bucks. So it fits into that truck quite nicely. If you want the super low crawlability, great. If you want to bomb around in the, you know, loose stuff outside or whatever you're trying to do, it makes sense. They kept the price pretty low. There's the transmissions are still compatible with the normal or the speed gear set. It says not the crawler gear set though. So something to note, you'll be able to find them at all the regular Traxxas authorized retailers. Next, new from Hobby Tech. I believe we might have talked about this when it was teased, but now it's being fully released. So this is the new Hobby Tech CRX2 X-Perf. Imagine that means extreme performance. I'm trying to shorten it up for the cool kids. Uh, this is a flat rail style, you know, platform based off of the new CRX2 platform that they released here in, in not too long ago. We did talk about that when it came out. It was kind of an SUV, like Willy's truck style to it. But this is a carbon fiber, flat rail, lots of brass on the axles. The front diff cover has the servo mount like integrated into it. So it's got these great big standoffs with this huge brass chunk on the front. The C hubs are also brass and I believe the rear lockouts match as well. Front servo looks like it's sandwiched between that front servo mount and then like the link mounts in the back, which are held off by some like post style standoffs. So that may make servo choices a little bit more, you know, tricky. The basic flat rail style chassis that kind of looks like SCX Pro style to it a little bit as far as like some of the shaping. Uh, but beyond that, it's basically the same type of platform with these same CRX2 transmission, same axles, just with a lot of brass. And then you do have some new shocks on there. These look to be like a rebranded, you know, desert lizard. I'm not totally sure if they're rebranded desert lizards or not, because it says that it's entirely designed and manufactured in France. The French are always who I look to for performance cars. But hobby tech in general isn't something we see a lot of here in the US, obviously being a French brand, something that's likely to be more popular in Europe. I think it also gets distributed down into Australia a little bit more often than some of the other brands as well. So if you're in either of those areas, this might be something that is an out of the box option for you that may be easier to get than some of the others on the market. I'll put a link below to the hobby tech website. Then you can check on there to see if you can find a dealer near you. Proline put a post up today that Proline by the fire tickets are now available. They've put up a link to the tickets, a full schedule of events, everything you need to know about the event well in advance which is fantastic. For some reason, Proline by the Fire seems to be a little bit more organized and a little bit better, you know, marketed than some of their other events. I don't know why, as I believe that it's the same people doing it, but Proline by the Fire just is always more on top of it. Axial Fest for me is this week and information was pretty sparse, hit and miss, a lot of people not knowing what's going on, when, where, all that. So it is nice to see this coming a little bit faster. People should be well aware of everything they need to know and hopefully 
easy to find. Matt and I will both be at Proline by the Fire. Looking forward to that event. A lot of good stuff that's planned for there. Definitely looking forward to that. It's always one of my most favorite events of the year. Speaking of most favorites, channel members. Channel membership is open for the channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel a little bit more, channel membership gives you some of that behind the scenes access. Last week I did an after the news show, after news delight, someone suggested for the name. I think that's great. Where I just went, you know, kind of through the news topics in a little bit of depth, just kind of talked candidly about maybe some more of my thoughts or feelings on a particular story here or there something that the members seem to enjoy quite a bit. So definitely gonna keep doing that. And then other just extra member videos pop up pretty regularly as well. So if you're interested in supporting the channel a little bit more, check that out linked below. This Wednesday, live stream takeover, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. As I mentioned, I have Axial Fest, so I may not make it back for the live show, but Matt will be there because he's not coming to join us. You'll still find live stream takeover on both channels though. And you know, Matt can fill a live stream without any help from me. Thanks again to rcmap.io for sponsoring this scale news update. rcmap.io is a website or an app that you can get on your phone where you can go find places to run your RC near you. There's also places like racetracks and hobby shops on there, just in case you're going to a new area and you'd like to see some more information. Each spot has the ability to be tagged with photos or a YouTube video and some notes that you can help, you know, understand what the place is like or how to get to a particular trail or things like that. There's also a brand new feature where you can go add favorites or you can create a list of places that you want to go or your favorite places that you have been. Last week, I talked about five of my favorite places to go crawl and now I can just add those to a simple list. If you're planning a trip somewhere and you wanna do some scouting ahead of time, it's just way easier to add the list and have those things saved so you don't have to go do all of that work again. They're also running another giveaway right now for a Vanquish H10 Optics. So all you have to do is create a free account on the website to be entered into the giveaway. And if you add additional spots around you, you'll be entered even more. So go check that out, rcmap.io. And thanks again for sponsoring the Scale News Update. Associated just released a DC-10. It's a drifter. And uh, yeah, I don't know a ton about the drift car world. I can't tell if they're gonna be good or not. I don't know if it's got good features or not. The build quality in the photos looks nice. It's got an adjustable motor position, mid versus up high. The battery can be moved around. It's got rear diff access to it. But beyond that, I can only go off of comments and reception on social media, which I think that more of the comments were based around why don't they have a touring car than why did they release or congratulations on releasing a drift car. So I don't know. That was all I knew about that. If you're interested in the drift world, you probably already saw it, but in case you didn't, I'll put a link to it below. But speaking of Team Associated, last week they put up a post saying public notice, and then they put up this big worded image that is linked next to me, this side. And it's basically saying that they are aware of parts that are being made and they called them counterfeit in this public notice that they had basically just saying that they were going to be pursuing litigation against people that are making these counterfeit parts. And they didn't name any names specifically, but on that post, which went wild, like 500 some odd comments, tons of shares as well. And it seems to be that at least the people are implying that this is going after the company or companies like Fans RC, which makes vintage replacement parts for some of like the old RC tents. Parts that Team Associated hasn't made in quite some time, it appears. And the the comments were mainly going after like the whole thing of like, hey, we, our cars wouldn't be running if it wasn't for companies like this or this company specifically. And it may have been spurred more on by the fact that Fans RC not only has made all of the replacement parts for these you know, vintage RC-10s, but they have also now made so many of those parts that they've made a whole car themselves. And it's, I, I believe it's a world's car, that's what it's referred to as with a graphite or carbon fiber pan. They used to call it graphite more. I don't know when that changed. But this is not a limited production thing or anything like that. They're doing it in batches and evidently the first batch sold out super quickly. I think it was like 380 something bucks for this kit, which I mean, I know I've seen like re reproduction or re-re-releases of uh, 
of the RC10 stuff. And I think that they were as much or more than that. So it looked to be, and from what the people say, the parts are of good quality. I heard rumors that they're using old molds that Associated didn't want anymore back whenever, you know, Team Associated has changed ownership hands before. So who knows where the actual truth in any of that lies. But a weird post. It, I do not think that it went the way Team Associated would have thought it would have gone. There were some people, you know, that were standing up for what Team Associated was trying to get at, being like, hey, there's people making unauthorized copies of our parts. And then the rest of the people were like, well, you're not making them. This is the only way we can get them to keep our real team associated cars usable. I'm not saying who is right or wrong or if anybody is right or wrong in this, but, but I feel like I see which way the public thinks is the way this should have gone. DSM Off-Road just released a handful of new parts for the Vanquish H10 Optic. They've got this rear tray and they've got some like a number of basket options like roof rack or baskets, whatever you want to call them. There's one that sits nicely up on top of the rear area just behind the interior. I think that one looks pretty good. Moves the power tank around a little bit, just kind of reorients it. Changes the rear fuel cell in the back from the cavity that could, you know, accept a rear steer servo to something that's just lower profile with a smaller fuel cell in there. It relocates the little aluminum cap into the new fuel cell as well. And then just add some other scale details to it. And like I mentioned, they also offered some other racks that go in different areas or different configurations. So if you've got an H10 optic, you're adding some scale details too and want a place to put them. DSM has got a number of parts available. Find a link to them below. Then a TRX4 Sport is new. Kinda, anyway, it looks the exact same. Underneath is pretty much the exact same as well with one small difference. They added inner fenders and they added the clipless body system to the Sport platform. Previously, the Sport was always just regular body pins. It was simple, effective, and underneath it didn't have any wheel wells. So it's just bare bones chassis. Now, churched it up a little bit through the inner fenders on there, clipless system. Their clipless system is so nice. There's no taking that away. How? Nice, that all works. You cannot deny. So having this small upgrade to the existing platform, is it a reason to go buy one? Maybe not. If you are buying one, I would just make sure that you're getting the updated one. That would That's really the only thing to take away from that, I would say. Next, there's this Grex airbrush system. Now this isn't new. A-Main just added it to their site and I go through whatever they added new each week. And it's just the coolest little airbrush system. Comes with a compression and all the hoses. And then the airbrush itself uses like a trigger style rather than that like push and pull thing. Anyway, single action versus double action or whatever. I don't know why I've wanted this thing so bad for so long. And then A-Main puts it up there and I feel like I just need to <laughs> order it. Anyway, it's in the news because maybe some of you do too. Other than that, moving on. Biddy Designs, that PGT3R that looks suspiciously exactly like a Porsche GT3. Anyway, it is now available in a pre-painted version in case you don't need to fall for a Grex airbrush system and you just wanna get that body and have it be done. You can now get this pre-painted in this one livery is all. And A-Main does have it in case you don't wanna order it from Italy. You can now get it state, well, it is a pre-order, but they'll probably be pretty quick with that. So just looks so good. On that one seventh scale, it's gonna be such an impressive body. Maybe I'll get the pre-painted and the non-pre-painted. So I have one to beat up and then one to destroy a terrible self-done paint job with. <laughs> <laughs> but that does it for this week's news topics. For this week's question, speaking of destroying things, paint jobs, whatever, what is the worst screw up you've ever had in RC? RC only, and we've all had screw ups, like real world screw ups. Let's leave those alone. What is your worst RC screw up? Did you smoke a super expensive ESC by doing a reverse polarity or touching the battery. Did you burn something down with a battery? Did you burn like a pre-released vehicle that wasn't out yet to the ground on the first run in like 10 minutes? Not naming any names. Uh, I wanna hear them. What have you done? What cost you the most pain or money or whatever? Like pain doesn't just have to be the money. Like you could have had 
hundreds of hours in a project and just it fell off a bridge. Let's hear your worst screw ups. Put it in the comments below. I love read them. My favorite part of the Scale News Update. But as always, thanks again for watching the Scale News Update every Tuesday. Hit the like button if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you're not already. Consider joining the channel membership if you're interested in supporting the channel a little bit more. But as always, thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.